563 kilometers in length and 405 meters deep is the massive Lake Superior. 113,000 people make their home at the head of this great lake. These warm and friendly people say welcome to Thunder Bay, Ontario, a city that combines natural beauty with a vibrant metropolitan lifestyle. Thunder Bay, Ontario, it's a city divided. 30% of the population is indigenous, and over the last two decades, they have come under attack. Suspicious deaths, mishandled police investigations, systemic racism, discrimination. Just another day in Thunder Bay. My dad, he was soft, but he was hard. He treated people the way they treated him. If they respected him, he respected them. He was, a, he was kind, he was humble, he was uh, respectful, he was sarcastic, he, was, uh, he had a really good sense of humor. He's a really funny guy. Um, every, every, everybody loved him. Um, all I hear when his name comes up from other people is nothing but good things or how he helped them or that he was a good man. I just know that there's a lot of respect for him out there. A lot of people love him. It's been more than six years now since Ronald Muscatawani last saw his father. Robert Muscatawani was a well-known artist in the city of Thunder Bay. Delicate work that requires a soft touch. A skill that he passed along to his firstborn son. Well, to be a good welder, you have to have soft hands, you have to have a good eye, you have to be well coordinated. And, and I, I believe that I got that skill from my father because he was an artist, and to be an artist, you gotta have soft hands and got to be well coordinated, you got to know where your hands are going and I don't think I'd have that skill if it wasn't for him. Robert Muscatawani went missing in August of 2015. His son Ronald, he still remembers the sense of panic and fear and asking his partner to help look for his father. I knew he started drinking again because he stopped for a few months and so I got her to call the hospital, call the jail, call the shelter house, drive around, look for him. And that's when I heard the news that he had passed away and that it, that it was my father that they found in the river. Robert's body was found in the Kamenistiqua River on the afternoon of September 9th, 2015. Authorities said it appeared he had been in the water for some time. An autopsy found the cause of death consistent with drowning. It was ruled accidental by the coroner just days later. He was 50 years old. I broke down. I, I don't remember the first. 15 seconds or so, 10, I think my head fell onto the table. And 
tikai you know no or something like that and then reality just kind of just settled in I guess and I just felt I just felt low I guess broken um, shocked I just can't be real maybe it's a mistake just things like that all kinds of emotions I'm so sorry man that's no, it's okay it's all right that's a hard moment it's not easy but you know you can you can heal from things things may, may never be the same it's not it'll never be easy but things can get better if you let it and let it out and talk about it you know Robert Muscatawini is one of 14 sudden death cases of indigenous people that have been recommended for reinvestigation, due in large part to the Thunder Bay Police Service's mishandling of the cases. It's a tragic story, but one that's become all too common here in Thunder Bay. For more than two decades, a shockingly high number of sudden death cases involving indigenous people have gained widespread attention for all the wrong reasons. Deaths that were quickly deemed not suspicious, with no foul play suspected by the Thunder Bay Police Service. It's a disturbing pattern that was criticized by community leaders and family members. It was also part of the reason an inquest was called into the sudden deaths of seven indigenous youth from the region. What we did gather evidence of throughout the inquest was racial violence, gang violence, peer violence, police violence. And of course there's always the potential for accident as well, but it was the default position of accident without evidence and absolutely no acknowledgement of the evidence of these other types of violence happening along this pathway, along this river, in this community. The inquest was one of the largest in the province's history. 146 witnesses testified, many recounting similar stories of racism, violence, and police discrimination all within the city. In the end, the inquest ruled three of the deaths accidental and the other four undetermined. And a committee was formed to review sudden death cases going back nearly two decades. This verdict, the findings of undetermined, should send a signal to not only this community but to this country that there are kids dying by the river and we don't know how they died. Many of the families were cautiously optimistic that it would bring change and some sense of closure. Their hopes were short-lived. An extensive search continues for a 14-year-old Josiah Begg from Kitchenamekusip in Inuag. He was last seen in Thunder Bay on May 6th. This after 17-year-old Tammy Kiash was found dead in a city river the same weekend Begg was last seen. Less than a year after the inquest, 14-year-old Josiah Bag and 17-year-old Tammy Kiash both go missing on the same night. Kiash was found dead a day later here in the Nebing McIntyre floodway. Her death was ruled as a drowning with no evidence of foul play by a Thunder Bay Police Service days later. Police suspended their ground search for Josiah Bag only after two days and discouraged volunteers from searching the waterways for his body. He was pulled from the McIntyre River nearly two weeks later. After that, confusion, pain, and anger. I think it just speaks to the, uh, the continued risk that our youth experience while here in Thunder Bay. That, uh, you know, to lose two youth, I understand that, uh, uh, Tammy and uh, Josiah went missing the same evening. We hope that the police will do more. Where are we going right now? Uh, 
to the shelter house. I'm gonna show you my uh, dad's paintings of the seven teachings. For Ronald Muscatawini, the memory of his father's spirit lives on here at Thunder Bay Shelter House. Shortly before his death, he was asked to paint a number of murals that still adorn the shelter's walls. A lasting legacy of a life cut too short. I feel pr proud of them. Um, makes me feel good that uh, his, uh, his memory, his, uh, his spirit is still, you know, he's still, he's still around. He feels like, he feels like he's, still, he's still here. That's, that's what I feel. When you're close to the paintings, you can feel them, man. Right? It goes on forever. Just uh, keeping his uh, memory alive, I guess. It's now been more than six years since Ronald Muscatawini's father, Robert, was found dead in Thunder Bay's Kimnisikawa River. His sudden death case is one of 14 that are being considered for reinvestigation by Ontario's Ministry of the Attorney General. I, I knew he didn't just fall under the river. I, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like going to the police station. I, I just feel intimidated by them, I just, they came and told my partner what happened, they told me a little bit of what, what happened, and it was, that was the end of the story, and just, just kind of like, just leave me alone now, you know, and, which is, I kind of regret, maybe I should have had a little bit more courage to stand up and ask a little more questions, but at the time, I just, I didn't want nothing to, I just didn't want to deal with them. And given the number of ways sudden death cases are mishandled, it's easy to see why families and community members are so mistrustful of the Thunder Bay Police Service. No tarp was used to preserve any physical evidence when Robert's body was removed from the river. And the witness who initially found his body was never interviewed. No evidence searches. No canvas. No video seized. No reporter consultation with the criminal investigations unit. And the scene was released that same day as the investigation had been ruled non-suspicious and no foul play suspected. It was frustrating. I was a little bit upset because I, all these years, I always thought that they would at least try to interview some people, or and I thought they did, and I thought they would look at video camera footage, which I thought they did. I thought they would try to maybe hold the scene for a little while, which I thought they did, but I guess, I guess they just ended, it, ended the investigation right then and there, and that was it, and I did not know that. Thank you, thank you, Benny. It's become an all too common headline in the city of Thunder Bay a default position for the authorities, a cruel joke, indigenous person found dead, no foul play suspected. But Robert Muscatawini wasn't the only body pulled from one of the city's waterways that fall. I personally just don't accept the fact that all of these people ended up in the river. Um, as many of the cases were stated, because of the consumption of alcohol, falling asleep and then rolling into the river. That, 
It just doesn't make sense to me. Dave Perry is a private investigator and former Toronto homicide detective. APTN spoke with him in 2017. He was hired to help investigate the death of 41-year-old Stacey Dabungi. Dabungi was found deceased in the McIntyre River just one month after Robert Muscatawani. Police ruled his death as not suspicious within three hours of finding the body and deemed it non-criminal the next day before an autopsy had been completed. They don't have the competency to do a, a death investigation or a homicide investigation unless they can show me that in other cases they've done a much better job than they did on this one. Then in July 2016, Clayton Mawakisik was also found dead in the McIntyre, the victim of manslaughter. There was no comparison of the three cases, even though they all occurred within 10 months of each other. It's on, it's on this side. This is, it's close by the waterfront. Okay. How are you doing with everything? You have with the, with the, you know, us being here doing all this, are you, are you handling it at all okay? Yeah, I'm handling it okay. Like I, like I said before, uh, I, was, I was really close to my dad, you know, and you know, he's, he's, he's like a, he's like a best friend, you know. He's, if there's one guy I could count on, I knew I knew it would it could be him. In the years since his father's death, there has been much speculation as to what really happened. In 2019, the family came forward with information that a suspect had pushed Robert into the river, killing him. I, I, I know I don't feel as, as much anger as I used to. I just don't feel as much pain as I used to looking down that way. Your friend um, told you he took you down here. Did he point out down there to you? He never like, showed me the exact spot. He just told me he was walking along the road or the trail there. And he just he, he smelled something and then he uh, looked down and that's when he saw the body face down. And then he ran and flagged the railroad police it's the CP rail police I'm not sure what they're called the suspect had an extensive history of violence including a murder charge in relation to an attack on an indigenous male in Thunder Bay the direct source of that information was unwilling to speak with authorities and the suspect in question was murdered in 2020 right now all I know is my dad wants me to move forward and keep going the direction I'm going towards. Just do my best. That's it. Take care of my family. And try to enjoy life. Following the seven youth inquests, the Office of the Independent Police Review Director issued the Broken Trust Report. The report confirmed what many have been saying for decades. Systemic racism and discrimination rampant within the police force. The office reviewed 37 sudden death investigations, nine of which were so problematic that they needed to be reconducted by a task force. Those investigations are still ongoing. Fast forward to 2022. APTM breaks the story of a confidential report prepared for the Broken Trust Committee to highlight an additional 14 sudden deaths that warranted further investigation. The deaths all involve indigenous people and date back between 2006 and 2019. The way that, that the reinvestigation had been managed had made many families very angry. We've tried to seek answers and the door closed to our face. There are 16 more families who have suffered because of the incompetence of the Thunder Bay Police Services and who will can who will suffer again once the deaths are re-examined
keep it the end try for more than two months to secure an interview with Thunder Bay Police Chief Sylvia Hoth. Our repeated attempts were declined. How I try to live my life is knowing what my, my father would want for me. I know that he would want me to move forward, take care of my family, do good in life. Just to make him proud, which I knew he was feeling what I was doing now, he would be proud. And that's, that's how I choose to look at things. There is a, a, a community and public expectation for them to serve and protect and do their do jobs diligently and effectively and safely and keep the community safe. And, you know, what I was seeing and still continue to see is that in our capacity, we are failing miserably because, again, we have, you know, some serious issues. The system is not just broken, the organization the operations, the people are broken and these are the very people that we expect to go out and do their jobs effectively by keeping the community safe, including our Indigenous people. Anishinaabek, Shkegawak and all Indigenous peoples have the right to feel safe and be treated equitably within the city of Thunder Bay, especially by those sworn to serve and protect. Systemic racism, exist within the Thunder Bay Police Service and needs to be ripped out at its roots. We demand that the Solicitor General of Ontario proceed with dismantling the Thunder Bay Police Service. The Ontario government means, needs to prioritize listening to the Indigenous peoples who live, work and visit Thunder Bay. As elected leadership, they have a responsibility to hold all institutions accountable. They have a responsibility to make sure that there's public safety you know, exceptional public safety here within the city of Thunder Bay for all citizens. Right? We have families who have to go home, um, you know, not receiving justice. And, you know, I ask all citizens of, of Thunder Bay, you know, if this is your family, family member, you would want justice. The public has a right to know. We don't have a right to keep anything from them and I wasn't seeing that.